great. Yeah, but this is this is great. I'm glad there's so many um, people that will be presenting. But yeah. Yeah. So and and I can I can do an overview of Contributor sure. Summit. That that I think is a worthwhile thing for us to discuss. There are still plenty of things that um, that I think we need to discuss as specifics to docs. Okay. Uh, things like. I think we need two sessions, one that suits the US West Coast, so late in the day, and one that suits Europe and Africa with the benefit that your time slot fits reasonably into the Europe and Africa time zone sure. because it's, it would be about this time you know, so that we can fit Xenob's work schedule. Um, the idea then, if we need a third session for Asia, it will probably be under the guide of the Chinese localization SIG mm -hmm. and Rick will lead that session and Rick's already agreed to be involved and to present and so so we've got the we've got his involvement but that will focus of course on Chinese not on not on and probably be done in Chinese language not not be focused on specifically documenting English language or multi-language all right sounds good. that sounds good yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sharing my screen and let's go through topics and then then we'll we'll go from there. That way we're not just sharing a uh, an empty screen. All right. So my screen here and let's make it big enough to read. Okay. So Okay, so what I've got is Contributor Summit is the crucial thing. Uh, sure. There are some other topics that I think are worth noting. Uh, pull request progress should not drop off our list uh, because I really do want to get scaling Kubernetes merged, but have been busy with other things. We should also include Google Season of Docs. Uh, they've now they've launched a new program. It is a different thing, and we'll we should discuss further than okay. past years. Yeah, I saw that there was a an email or a call for contributors already, and I was like, it's very interesting. Right. Like already. <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah, and that and that is impressive. Now, Zenob had a topic on mentoring for She Codes Africa, mm -hmm. and I hadn't. Do we do? I guess without her, we probably don't get much benefit by talking about that. Sure. The pro I, from what that was like, there's a uh, link to the website where there's like a uh, they're writing something similar to Google um, Summer of Code, where they're sponsoring oh, okay. uh, women contributors to open source in, in Africa, which is really 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 cool. Um, and okay. they're looking for uh, open source organizations who might have um, topics or things that people can work on. So that would be maybe something to look at as like a larger I'm not really sure if that's like a document maybe it's not like really documentation but it might be worth it to look into encouraging people to uh or encouraging uh women who would be interested in that like to look at some of the things inside of Jenkins so cool okay good all right any other topics that are hot on your that are on your list or or should be on the agenda um no I just looked at I need to read the the agenda from the day below <laughs> so it looks interesting yeah sorry the, it's complicated right with two office hours in a week it's like right. oh wow I, I, right I, I can't just read the day the preceding notes I've got to go exactly. two notes back <laughs> exactly all right okay so first proposal then is cancel this meeting next week in preference to the contributor summit Mm -hmm. uh, we actually this will be happening this meeting would ske be scheduled to happen after the summit but by then I will probably be completely burned out and unable to, unable to function. And therefore I propose we cancel. Do you object if we cancel this next week to persuade people to attend summit? Yep, that's fine with me. Okay, great. All right. Um, so we've got summaries from the governing board and special interest groups already agreed. So for instance, Daniel Beck, uh, we'll talk on security. Uh, Olivier Veronin uh, on infrastructure. Uh, Tim Jacome 
on release. Uh, I'll talk about docs. Uh, Alyssa Tong has agreed to talk about events and uh, advocacy. And each of these should be three to five minutes. We hope no one will spill much beyond that. And I'll actually be fairly rigorous in holding us to that so that we don't burn up all of our time in the first session for status reports. Uh, then we've got uh, Rick with Chinese localization already confirmed. And I think there are several others that are confirmed as, oh yes, Cara de la with Google Summer of Code and Cloud Native. And oh, and me with platform. So we have a full agenda for the first 90 minute segment and then a uh, after the 90 minute segment, we will have a 30 minute uh, after the 90 minute presentation segment, we'll have a 30 minute organizing segment. And in that organizing segment, the uh, track leads will identify their participants and find a time, find times that work for the participants. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I checked yesterday, we had uh, 30 plus registrations already yesterday. Awesome. So Kristen, I haven't seen your registration yet. So I would oh. love to see that. <laughs> All right. That, that's actually a good sign, right? Because the people yeah. that I'm confident will be there, because I haven't seen Xenob's registration either. Uh, I haven't seen one from Meg McRoberts or from Vlad Silverman. So our regular participants haven't registered. So we're going to have more than the third, more than the 30 registrations by the time we're done with this. So that's that's good. All right, so then uh, documentation, I think the proposal was two tracks, one uh, for Europe and Africa, one for uh, Western US. Mm -hmm. And we'll just rely on East Coast US fitting reasonably into the Europe and Africa time. Then Chinese localization will cover another. We won't do the pipeline authoring segment. I talked to Liam Newman about it and he's he's not ready to do it. And I'm not sure we've okay. got enough interest yet to do it. Uh, we may combine security infrastructure and release into a single track called securing the delivery pipeline. Okay. Uh, that's a, an interesting topic. And we've got several, Olivier has agreed that he's willing to lead it if others aren't available. And I'm also checking with, with other people to see that they're ready for that kind of a topic. Uh, let's see. So then in terms of on the documentation side, some of the hot topics search for the doc site and the plugin site is currently being invested by investigated by Gavin Mogan. Mm -hmm. So site site internal search. Uh, there's the Google Summer of Code project uh, for REST API generation. That is ultimately it will deliver something that's valuable to docs. So mm -hmm. is of interest. And uh, docs inventory is the big initiative that I am trying to, to lead, which is and uh, categorization where we take what we have now, uh, take the current content, including Wiki, and try to slot it into places in the book. Okay. Place, uh, place it, place the content into the book, basically creating a table of contents for a book that a, a thing that does not exist yet, which is the full collection of all the information. And, and the idea being that will help us detect if there are gaps, gaps in our definition of the sections, mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, or if, let's call them chapters. So that we use book terminology, <laughs> sure. uh, detect overflows in uh, in chapters. Hey, if one chapter has 
10,000 pages in it and another has three, that, that would indicate we've got too much information in one place and not another, those kind of things. And then that for me would already be a, a dramatic accomplishment as optional. The idea was prioritize uh, sections for focus by our value or by our, our perception of which things would be most useful. Okay. And let's see. So do you have any questions there in terms of those ideas around docs inventory and categorization? No, I do know we have the, um, do, are we going to give us, I, I actually kind of not really know where this is, but like a status update on where we are with copying over, like I know Gavin wrote that tool to be able to do plugin was it plugin oh, documentation good. migration? Right, right. Yeah, the, that's like, that's a that's a very good thing to give a that should be included in the status report. Absolutely. Yeah. So the plugin migration, plugin migration, plugin docs migration status report. Yes. Maybe yeah. what we should do is put put that up in the in the docs thing here because it's plugin migration status report. That's a great story, by the way. Yeah. It's amazing the results we've achieved, thanks to and then the plugin site uh, improvements mm -hmm. that Gavin has done are just absolutely delightful. Exactly. Okay, so plugin migration status report, uh, wiki migration status report. All all three of those I think are good good components of the initial. The initial status report. Good. Okay. Uh, all right. Then let's see. Other. I think. I think. That, well, any other questions on on the documentation tracks for contributor summit? Not that I can. Uh, think of right now. Okay. Welcome, Zinab. Hey. Hi. Great to have you here. Thanks for joining. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm late. Oh, no problem. We're delighted that you're here. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. So we were just discussing Jenkins Contributor Summit next week and had agreement that we would cancel this meet this meeting. Let's see, am I sharing my screen, Kristen? Yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> yes. right, like, so we'll cancel this meeting next week so that uh, we can be involved as much as possible in the Contributor Summit. And then we're reviewing what the content of my presentation will be uh, I've got three to five minutes during the first session to present a status report on dogs. Oh, oh, right. And there's another one. Google Summer of Code, Season of Dogs, Results, Kubernetes. And then we should probably in, in the next phase put Google Season of Docs plans And how we'll handle their their uh, their new processes. Okay. So, Zinab, were there any topics that you wanted to be sure we got on the agenda today? I could talk about Contributor Summit for a very long and embarrassing amount of time, but there may be other things you want to be sure we address. Um. Yes. Yeah, so, um, in the last meeting I had with um, Christine. I mentioned something about a program we're planning at Shikud Africa, an open source bootcamp. And I don't know if it is something um, Jenkins would like to be part of. So we're currently, um, the program is actually supposed to start in April. So we're looking for open source organizations that could sponsor and also um, mentor the participants for a period of four weeks in April. 
And so tell, can you tell me more about what, spon- what I, I think I understand what mentoring means. It probably means okay. coaching on code. Tell me what sponsoring means. Okay, um, sponsoring means um, providing funding that we we'll use to um, pay the participants at the end of the bootcamp because we intend to give um, participants a stipend of, um, is it 500 or $1,000? Sorry, that's in my head. Um, there are about, I think, um, $1,000 or $500. I'm not 100% sure, but we're planning on taking in um, 50 participants. And um, we plan to give the top 10 participants um, Udacity Nano Degree courses. So um, the funds that we plan to, that we hope to get from sponsors will be used in funding all this. So um, we have um, basically two sponsorship tiers. We have um, individual and corporate. Um, Individual is between 500 to $1,000 while the corporate tier which is broken down into from bronze to platinum is from $1,000 and above. So yeah, that's just like um, summary. So um, once an organization, if an organization chooses to sponsor, then we also advise that um, they mentor the participants they are sponsoring, but it's not compulsory that if um, the open source organization probably um, might not have the time or the resources to mentor the participant, then we'll look for other open source organizations to mentor them. Okay, so I think you're, you're already getting onto then the, so sponsor, I think I got it captured correctly. The mm. sponsors provide funding to, that then will be used to pay the participants and I yes. assume the participants are there in Nigeria, or is it multiple no, countries No, all in over Africa. Africa. Okay, all, all right. So over part- Africa. Okay, are, are uh, throughout Africa. The is open to ladies, ladies all over Africa. Okay, and and tell me more about how the how would a sponsor transfer the funds to She Codes Africa. So for instance, um, I may have an interested corporation that would want to participate, but they'll need things like, how do we transfer the funds, et cetera. Okay, um, so She Code Africa currently has um, an account where we accept um, USD payments through card. Um, that's how we accept donations to She Code Africa currently. So um, if, an organization chooses to sponsor, I'll just send them a link to um, where they can make payment in the invoice. Okay, great. I think it takes even, uh, it's not just USD, it takes a couple of other currencies, but I'm not really sure of. um, Okay, great. But it, but it does take it does take donations in US dollars. Yes, it does. Okay, great. All right, and so starts in April. So you need yes. the need the funding funding established by mid March by end of February. What's what's your um, timeline? Um, so um, I wouldn't really want to put too much pressure on you, especially considering the fact that. Um, I'm just raising this, though it's because we've not been able to meet for a while, and I wanted to mention this in person, that's why. So um, I don't know, as early as, um, but preferably before mid-March, so when we are making (coughs) selections for the participants um, ending of March, we know the number of participants we can take, so we don't take more than the available funding, then also we know the mentoring organizations that will be participating so we can use their requirements to select participants. Good, good, okay. Uh, so, so the idea is at end of March, you'll choose the participants to fund and you do that based on the amount of funds that are, be, have, are, that are available. And then, yes. okay, got it. 
Excellent. And okay. also the uh, mentor mentorship availability. Ah, okay. Also need mentor available. Okay, good. Now, and tell me more. So this is an open source boot camp, and so yes. is the idea to introduce the participants to contributing to open source projects in specific ways, like purely coding, or is it okay to be contributing in documentation? Tell me, tell me more about the the meaning of the words open source boot camp. Okay, so um, we want it to be in all areas, documentation, design, coding. We don't want to limit it to coding. So um, we can have um, ladies from different tracks, different fields be able to participate because that's the idea we are trying to promote that um, open source is beyond coding. So um, that's the first part. Um, then the second part is it's like we're trying to, it's something like Google season of dogs, but not exactly the same in the sense that the duration is shorter one. It's just for ladies in Africa alone too. Then um, the open source organization that wants to mentor will be required to fill a form, a um, project idea form. So in that form, um, if some of the information will require uh, um, project details that the project the participant is going to be working on, then probably it may be if it's a project that requires some skill level, maybe like requires proficiency in Java, then you kind of let us know the level of proficiency if it's a begin beginner, intermediate or expert, um, things like that, then the number of participants that um, you also be willing to mentor for that project, the mental details, things like that. So um, all these requirements are now what we we'll use to um, select the participants at the end of the day so that um, number one, the learning, um, the time the participants will use to um, get familiar with the, with the project will not be too um, long since the bootcamp period is um, short. That's one of the reasons why, why we are doing that. Very good. Okay, so um, so project ideas submitted by the sponsoring organization. So at least for for what I've seen with Google Summer of Code, project ideas are wide ranging and can can be difficult to extract. We've got I think seven or eight right now for Google Summer of Code um, as ideas. We've had as many as ten in the past, but not a lot more than that. Um, and and when you say four weeks, so it'd be a four week project, is that four weeks of the person working full time, four weeks working 10 hours a week? Yeah, what's your full what's time, your okay, full time right. four weeks working full time. All right, so four weeks full time yeah. for the um, for the 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 sponsored, what would you call it for the participant? Uh, yes. And then assumes four weeks of, I assume, like twice a week mentoring? Yeah, twice a week mentoring, exactly. From the mentors. Okay. All right. Um, so, um, yeah, I think then also um, at the end of the bootcamp, um, the mentors will feel like an evaluation of um, to evaluate the participants and the whole program um, to let us know if there are ways we can improve. Then also you rate the participants so that it will, and you'll be required to score the participants. This will enable us to be able to select um, the top um, 10 participants at the end of the day for the nano degree courses. And um, the score will also be based on um, how um, complete you feel the project is or how well the participant was able to um, work on the project and things like that. Yes, and the participants will also feel an evaluation of the open source organization, mentors, things like that, just to tell us their overall experience, work on the projects report also. 
just like um, summarize and let us know what they were able to work on during the four weeks and their experiences and things like that. So um, all these um, half forms that are ready. So when it's time, we'll just send them to the open source organization for them to just fill in. Great. Okay. All right, so for me, the, the challenge here is the, the financial sponsorship piece. The Jenkins okay. Project available funds are quite limited, but I may have an, a, a potential corporate sponsor that okay. has more ready access to funds. I can certainly, let me do the following. Let me bring a, so, so when we talk about your two sponsorship tiers. So the individual mm. tier and the corporate tier, where mm. would an open source project be considered in the corporate level or is there a, a different level that I didn't note? Um, so um, I'll share a doc with you that has um, full information. So um, oh, we have the individual tier, which is just $500 to $1,000, that's one level. But on that corporate, we have bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. So bronze is um, from $1,000 to, I think, $2,000, then and so on and so forth till platinum that's $5,000 and above. So an open source organization can choose to sponsor from any um, level. OK, I see. So. Um, open source. Let me just get a link to the doc right now and share with you. Great. Okay. Okay. Let's see, I need to find my chat window. Where is it? There it is. All right. There's also. Um, There's also a site. I'll share the site with you also. Okay. Great. Okay. So I'm in a you're okay if I put that link into the into the Google Doc here. Uh -huh. I like that name, Contributhon. I'm going to steal mm -hmm. that. Great word. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. I'm sending the sites now. Okay. So, got it. All right. All right. So, Zinab, anything else you'd like to? It feels like what what I would like to take as an action item personally is okay. Mark to check with with friends at Cloudbees okay. to see if they are willing to sponsor. Uh, right. um, I think it's worth checking other other potential sponsorships as well. It seems like a, a great opportunity to, to consider it. And I'll beg Kristen to chime in with her voice when I send the, I'll copy her on it so that she's aware that we're, we're suggesting, hey, here's a, 
an opportunity and here's what what it would require. Yeah, I reached so, out on some of the um, like some of the women groups too, and uh, that I just know of to see hopefully to kind of like pass that along. <laughs> I don't know how if any if they were able to continue to other open source organizations or other open source projects or other their companies, but I did pass that information along to a couple other groups too. Yeah, good good so point, much. and we may no want to discuss with Cara de la She's running a, uh, a an organization somewhat like this in in and around London. Uh, about their London experience, I, I don't remember the name of the group she's running, but it's uh, something similar where a focused on getting people into tech and getting them getting them letting them experience it firsthand. Okay. Zinab, I think I may have interrupted you. Was there something you wanted to tell us? Um, so I just wanted to mention um, another suggestion for project um, idea. So um, other areas also that um, would like uh, things around community management. So probably you one that could help you man manage your developer community or manage content, maybe your social, me um, social media accounts. Um, things like that, maybe Jenkins' presence in um, the community, in the open source community at large, probably like a dev advocate or something. So give me some more, more description there. I think that sounds very interesting. I didn't have my volume quite loud enough. So it, okay. the idea was, should could someone from She Codes Africa assist with Jenkins advocacy, is that what you're saying? Tell, tell no, me so what I was saying is, um, say um, if Jenkins decides to participate as a mentor organization, um, a project idea, like aside code, aside documentation, other project ideas could include um, dev advocacy or community management, probably managing um, Jenkins presence in the open source community at large, your social media presence, um, things like that also. I also project ideas that people could work on during that four weeks. Now I understand, thank you. Okay, that's good. All right, so it's it's reinforcing, reinforcing that there are many areas to contribute to open source that are exactly. not code. Exactly. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, so so it feels like what what I, I wonder should we maybe we ought to put this as a topic for discussion in the contributor summits advocacy segment because wouldn't this be an ideal place to bring to Alyssa Tong and to Marky Jackson and others who are working on advocacy to say, hey, here is here is a vehicle that could might be able to help with advocacy, and and it's a place where we can consider spending to support advocacy. So, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let me let's. I think what I'm going to do, Zinab, is I'm going to bring up the um, the let's see the contributor summit agenda draft and I'm just going to put an entry into it for I think I may already have a track for advocacy if I don't nope I don't so let's create one because it's a good Jenkins advocacy I don't know who we will have lead I would guess Alyssa Tong or Marky Jackson, but suggested topic seems like a hot one, which would be She Codes Africa, uh, four week mentor, mentoring program beginning in April. Uh, and that's where Zinab, we would probably have you explain it to them in a session talk to them about okay. it. And, and so this was, 
um, let's call it mentoring Yeah, so, and now I'm just going to take that out for now. And take, okay, so this thing, it's target audience here is Jenkins contributor, or Jenkins users, Jenkins administrators, and potential and administrators. All right, so so at least for me, that one's a candidate. It, whether or not a track gets staffed will depend on interest in who's willing to attend the track and participate. So I'll let you weigh your decisions on, hey, should you participate in that one and or others, depending on your available time. Okay. All right, so let me put a note there that added to the, all right, added to the Contributor Summit draft agenda. All right. Is there more that we, we should be aware of with, uh, with regard to the Contributhon, to the She Codes Africa effort? Um, no, that's it. Excellent. Okay, well, that's exceptional. Thank you very much for sharing. That's really great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so pull request progress. I still have not made my progress on scaling Jenkins on Kubernetes and probably won't for the next two weeks because of the Contributor Summit. Um, my apologies, <laughs> we'll continue. Google Season uh -huh. of Docs is coming. Um, Zenob, I was curious, are you interested in acting as a mentor? Um, are we, let me ask to this group, the group of the three of us, are we willing to act as mentors for a new Google Season of Docs uh, participant project? Sure. That should go in oh. here as well. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering. Oh, go for it. I was wondering, um, is this going to be a shorter period of time, like some of the changes that we've seen for Google Summer of Code? Is this like another, like a shorter? I think this one actually they made it longer and dramatically oh, okay. more flexible. Longer in Great. the sense not of not of amount of hours expected, but of duration and okay. dramatically more flexible in that, if I remember correctly, Google will give the money directly to the open source organization and the open source organization then pays the, uh, the person that does the writing. Okay. So, so it's, it's a different, uh, it needs, needs more investigation. Yeah more hmm. understanding because I don't know that the Jenkins project right now has the correct type of account to receive the payment from Google. So I've got to investigate that with the governing board. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a good thing to bring up. Also, um, maybe the contributor summit would be a good place to try to come up with some ideas. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Yes. Well, and that for me fits in the, in the docs portion, right? We should be sure that, that, um, Google Summer of Docs is covered there in terms of Summer of Docs um, 2021, and uh, show what what would it mean to participate. Uh, what are the requirements, etc. All right, contributor summit topic. Good, very good. Okay. Anything else on on either uh, any of those topics? Um, nothing else from me. Okay. And I don't think I've got anything else. 
So it feels like we let's let's put it here. Let's put let me put a summary on this. So she codes Africa contributathon and contributor summit and the summit. Okay, and we agreed we will cancel the 25th yeah. for Contributor Summit. And so the next meeting where we'll actually meet is in March sometime. And now I need to look at the calendar. So March the 4th. All right. I think that's it. I'll archive the, I'll post the recording uh, separately. I oh, actually, I do have to highlight to the two of you something we did in the last session in the, in the US West Coast session. We added help to a pipeline plugin. Oh, cool. And it was, it, we did it live and it was a lot of fun. And we realized that that particular thing we were working on was especially challenging and needs a, a video recorded to show people this is how you do this and this is how it's it's actually pretty easy to do but you need to be aware this is how it's done right yeah because <laughs> it's like adding any type of help text to anything inside of a jenkins plugin right like because it's following exactly except yeah. the challenge here is i read i see a page here right i see the page the complication for me was i see this page on Oops, not this page. I see this page here, the pipeline steps reference, and I think, oh, okay, this is just some ASCII doc somewhere that I that I can go edit this directly. And oh, here's this thing that I click this, and it must be a page I can just edit. I can improve nope. this thing. And it turns out, <laughs> no, I have to go inside the plugin that contributes this thing. Yep. I have to submit a pull request to that plugin, which is really a, a cool hybrid between code and documentation, but it's a it's an atypical hybrid. So so it was a it was a fun exercise. Right. I guess the positive thing here too is now that you've added that documentation, not only will it show up on the page, it will show up inside of Jenkins as help. Right. Right. Yeah, and so that's and that that's for me is the explanation. Point. It's like, look, publishing the documentation on a web page is is good, but it's much better that it's inside the user's own Jenkins installation and, and more and more people need to know that it's available there. So this, this was fun. Awesome. Cool. All right. Anything else before we end? Okay, thanks. And I uh, will talk to you at the Contributor Summit. Thanks very much. All right. Thanks, y'all. All right. Bye. Bye.